Commander. Morning. How much have you got today? Whew. The way we go through it, I'm surprised there's any left. I don't think that I don't feel the same way, too. All that money. Just a few bundles. That's all I need. Oh, I must be mad doing this job. Well, there's worse. Worse? Now, what could be worse than having to look at that lot? Well, how would you like to be the fellow who actually throws it into the furnace? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. All that lovely money going up in flames. That's right. Yeah, there must be somebody, somewhere, who's trying to save it. Ah, yes. There's money in it. Money to burn. Oh, uh, Yes? Jeff. Jeff Randall not in. Ah, uh, no, he's out for today. Can I help you? No, no, it, it's a personal matter, really. Oh, I see. Oh, would you like to leave a message? I'd, uh, no, I'd rather see him. Who shall I say called? Mm. No, I'd rather leave it, really. Well, all right. Is it a job? A job? No, no, it's nothing like that. No. Oh. But you needn't look too worried. There's money in it. Don't you worry, I'll get a hold of them. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. isn't the way to my place. No, it's the way to mine. Nightcap? One martini, wine with dinner, and two very large after-dinner brandies. Well, seems reasonable. Plus a car ride to your apartment. Miss Saxon, how long have you been a lawyer? Three years. Well, the effects are all right, but your conclusions are a little shaky. I thought we still had some business to discuss. All right. And I'll guarantee you're offered nothing stronger than coffee. Whiskey for the lady. Oh, Mally. The very same. Shall I uh, pour the drinks? Well, let's get in first and complete the introductions. Can I take your coat? No, no, thank you. I'm not staying. But I, I still don't know who you are. Now, you can't appear in my life like this and then fade away like nothing had ever happened. That's my lawyer, O'Malley. Miss Elizabeth Saxon, Kevin O'Malley, an old friend. And Burden. You know, it must be six years since we've seen each other. Now, will you have that drink? No, really. You must have a lot to talk about. And there's not much left of the night. Well, I'll drive you home. No, the porter will get me a cab. You stay and entertain Mr. O'Malley. You're a lawyer, you said. And if I know you, she's going to come in very handy. Now, Jeff. All right, O'Malley, what is it this time? A fantastic opportunity. The last time, as I remember, it was a job lot of 27,000 pairs of false teeth. But this one's a bit different, Jeff. Now, let's put the joke in a part. I don't need your help. It's for old time's sake, Jeff. Now, I feel there's a big score between us, and this'll help to even it up, maybe. What are you going on about, O'Malley? Oh, can't you see, you thick Englishman? 
that I'm trying to tell you in me dumb Irish way that I'm grateful for all the jams you've got me out of in the past. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you not see why the English and the Irish remain the world's best enemies? There's a bit of Irish in me and all. Yes, but the worst bit. Look, O'Malley, you don't owe me a thing. Oh, yes, I do, Jeff. So here it is. I'm offering you a half share in 475,000 pounds. That's a lot of false teeth. Now, I'm serious, Jeff. The money's there. For the taken. For the taken. You mean you're giving me a chance to steal? 475,000 pounds. Not exactly steal the money, no. It's more like we're going to salvage it. You mean somebody just doesn't want half a million pounds? Used notes, withdrawn from circulation, to be incinerated in the furnaces of Battersea Power Station tomorrow night. O'Malley, you're not getting mixed up with us. Yes, I am, Jeff. I've got it all laid on. I switch three plain wooden crates at the last moment, and they burn a half a hundredweight of newsprint and nobody's the worse off. Somebody's bound to be. Not on this deal. That's what's so perfect about it. It is, like I said, more salvage than stealing. Now, look, Jeff, I've got it all laid on. I'd like to cut you in. Now, don't answer me now. You can reach me through this girl. Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. Benson. She's a very... Torchy singer at the Club 70. Just say it's Jeff. She knows all about you. Ring me. Now, don't forget. Ring me. I can tell you now what my answer's going sure, to be. Sure, and I know what the answer would be. But just let the thought of all that money run around in your head for a while. Wait till your next rent's due and you can't pay it. Wait until you need a new car and you can't pay for it. Then you'll think of your old mate, Kevin O'Malley. But then, it'll be too late, Jeff. That once-in-a-lifetime opportunity will have slipped through your fingers. Ring me. Pay our fee. No. And he knows I can't afford to take him to court. If anyone's a thief, he is. I hope someone steals his whole perishable supermarket. Well, what are we going to do? I'm going to have an early night. Look, Jeff, we've been broke before, but this time I it's. I know, Marty, I know, but what can I do? But listen. I'll see you tomorrow, Jeff. Yeah.
are you doing? A warrant to search the premises. All right, Carpenter, Edwards, you know what to do. The full treatment. Take the place apart. Now, wait a minute. Don't worry, Randall. You'll be compensated if necessary. If necessary? Look at him. All right, Tonkins. Thanks. Now, maybe you'll tell me what this is all about. Last night, Randall, Tuesday the 23rd, your car was seen parked in a side street, besides the Battersea Power Station. Oh, so all this is for a parking offence, is it? He's got quite a sense of humour, Inspector. Who wouldn't have with half a million stashed away? Half a million? You mean you didn't know what all this is about? No, how could I? I'll have to take you down to the station, Randall. And what if I refuse? Just get dressed and make it fast. <laughs> Jeff. What's that? Is that you banging, Jeff? 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 What are you doing in here? Driving offence. A driving offence? What do you do? Pinch a bus? No. Part next to the place somebody chose to steal half a million from. That's the story. Half a million? Someone's wrecked the apartment. Yeah, I know. Who? The police. Oh. You weren't there, were you? Where? The half a million. No, no, miles away. They must have had the wrong car number. Oh. Well, it shouldn't take too long to sort out. I've been to the office. The phone was going, and Jeannie wasn't there. She's gone to her aunt's. What, Sybil's? Sussex. Oh, that's Matilda's. What's the matter, Jeff? You're not letting this get you down, are you? No, no. I mean, as soon as they check your story, you'll be out of here in no time. Yeah, sure. You don't mind answering a few questions, do you, Randall? No, not at all. As long as you'll answer me one first. Go ahead. Am I under arrest? And if so, what's the charge? No charge, Randall, as yet. Then I'm free to go. In theory, yes. When you've answered my questions. Yeah. All right, let's get started. When my lawyer arrives. All right, Randall, first things first. Where did you spend last night? You don't have to answer that. Well, Randall, I was out. So your whole porter told us. Did you take your car? Yep. White saloon, number RXD 966F? Yeah. Then where were you last night? I was out with a girl. We went to dinner, a couple of clubs. I don't remember where exactly. Her name? Anne-Marie. She's a singer in some club. Which club? I don't know. This girl, Anne-Marie, What's her surname? Benson. Emery Benson. Great, Jeff. You'll be out here in no time. All right, Randall. We'll check on this. Will you want to stay with your client, Miss Saxon? Yes, thank you, Inspector. We'll have Miss Benson's confirmation in no time. One way or the other. Saxon? Elizabeth? Will you do something for me? Anne Marie Benson, she works at the Club 70. You didn't tell the police that, Jeff. The Club 70? Uh, yeah, I didn't mention it before because I wanted you to get a start. What sort of start? To get there before the police. Why should I see Anne Marie before the police? Uh, well, to let her know what questions they're going to ask her. What does it matter if you were with her? Mr. Randall, it might be misinterpreted if I saw Anne-Marie. 
Sort of like priming the pot. Yeah, yeah. Didn't think of it like that. Detective Sergeant Hines. Thank you, Miss Kendon. Miss uh, Benson. I believe you know Mr. Randall. Mr. Jeff Randall. Name's familiar. Familiar? Oh, come on. When did you see him last, Miss Benson? Last night. Oh, look, I said the name's familiar. Till I put a face to it, I can't tell when I last saw him. If I ever saw him, that is. Yes, of course. See if this jogs your memory. Maybe. Do you recall seeing him last night? To me, it's a nothing face. Maybe I saw him last night, maybe I didn't. I can't tell you. What did you do last night, Miss Benson? Last night, Tuesday, my night off. Did you spend any part of it with Mr. Randall? Miss Benson? No, definitely not. on how much you want to know. Well, initially, whether or not that car was in the Battersea area during the last 10 days. It's all order, eh? Not really. Battersea's a particularly industrial area. How does that help? Well, each area has its characteristic fallout, Inspector. It depends on the type of factories in the area. Different permutations leave different fallout ash on the car or on a man's shoes. You take a look at this. Each colour roughly indicates the chemical composition of the area's fallout. Battersea, aluminium, sulphur, magnesium. Ah, thank you. Now, Mr. Miller. Aluminium, sulphur, magnesium. No doubt about it. Oh, what does that prove? This car has been in the area. At least once in the last ten days. She didn't go along with my story, eh? She didn't even know you. The name was familiar, though. And the car was definitely in the Battersea area in the last week or so. How they worked that up? Oh, we've had it down to the laboratories. We've been testing it all afternoon. We? Oui. So what's it mean, Jeff? Your alibi doesn't stand up. Yeah, that's right. Well, don't just lie there and say that's right. I mean, a job like this can carry 10 or 15 years in jail. I know the form, Marty. All right, so you know the form. I'll go along with that. Come on, Jeff, you've got to open up a bit. You're in this pretty deep, you know. I know how deep I'm in. I don't need you to remind me. What is it, then? Some sort of trouble? Blackmail? Is that it? You're being forced to, to cooperate? You're way out. Well, to my way of thinking, there's only one possibility left. You were there on Tuesday, and you were there because you wanted to be. That's it, isn't it? You've conned me, the inspector, your own lawyer, everybody, me! Look, Marty, why don't you go to wherever you go to until this thing blows over? 
Oh, no, it's not as easy as that, Jeff. I'm supposed to be your friend, someone you turn to. Not someone you make a fool of the minute something goes wrong. All right. That's the way you want it. I'm going. Party? Yes? Nothing. Right. Bosom pal Randall. And why shouldn't I be? He's in jail and it's my fault. It's not your fault. It's his own stupidity put him there. Anyway, I've got to see him. Don't be a fool, Kevin. You've had too much to drink. Too much or not enough. Wide and wild, oh, <laughs> to where your heart has ever been since first you were my boy. Come on, Arthur, steady on, please. <laughs> Come on. Talk to you, Jeff. What are they charging you with? The full half million. Listen, I put your girlfriend up for an alibi, but she didn't come through. Ah, she wasn't a no, Jeff, was she? And uh, why would you be needing an alibi anyway? Look, O'Malley, you got 12 hours. 12 hours? What for? To get out of the country. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't need to get out of the country. It's a pretty tricky game. That one of us is playing, yeah. You're saying he didn't take the money. Right. And you are saying the same. Right. Okay, then. From now on, it looks like every man for himself. All right, O'Malley. That's the way you want to play it. I haven't got a choice, Jeff. You're the one who's calling the shots. Right. Right. On your way. Ah. I, uh, I hope I wasn't too, uh, offensive last night, Sergeant. I don't think so. I wasn't, uh, violent, was I? Or, uh, or singing drunk, was I? All right, O'Malley, do you want to get out of here or not? Mm, that depends. Depends? Mm. On what? Do you do breakfast here, Sergeant? No, look, O'Malley, don't be saucy. Get your coat and things and get out of here. Right you are, Sergeant. Well, come on, come on, or do you want to spend another night with us? Goodbye, Sergeant. And goodbye in there, whoever you are. We'll meet up again, I've no doubt. Goodbye, O'Malley.
I decided to come back, Jeff. Very glad you did, Marty. I mean, after all, what are friends for? Just to clean it up, though, uh, you, uh, you didn't. No, no, I didn't. Well, half a million's disappeared, Jeff, and you know something about it. Do you think we should start from the beginning? Yeah, all right, Marty. I went to Battersea Power Station. I went there because a friend, an old friend, put up a scheme to me. To lift the money? And you wouldn't tell the police because of him? Well, I thought I was in the clear. I thought they'd pick him up with only help from me. You shouldn't have kept it to yourself, Jeff. Well, what else could I do? If I told you, you'd have found some way you'd have done something. It'd been the same as me putting the finger on O'Malley. So I just sat tight. Well, why did you go there? I don't know. I went. Window shopping. And that's where the police picked you up? Window shopping? No, someone tipped them off. They got the car number. What about this alibi? This girl, Anne-Marie? Yeah, I thought you'd back me up. She's a girlfriend of this fellow who put the scheme up to me. It's an old friend of yours. O'Malley. O'Malley! He's the one! He's got the half a million! Yeah, that's what I thought. But I don't know, Marty. I just don't know. He claims he lost his nerve at the last minute. Now, logically, it's either him or me. Well, we know it isn't you. O'Malley. Well, if it isn't just Randall's lawyer. You were at the police station. Hmm, they invited me to stay the night. Invited? They insisted. Drunk, disorderly, released first thing in the morning. Without breakfast. Quite a coincidence, the same station as they're holding Mr. Randall. Uh, quite a coincidence. Another coincidence. He mentioned a girl at this club in his statement. Now, Miss Saxon, I'd like to help Jeff out. But how can I help the man when he won't help himself? And confess to something he hasn't done. Mm, you may be right. But all the signs are against him. Luckily, Mr. O'Malley, in English law, you need more than indications of guilt. You need proof. So far, there's not a jot of real proof against Jeff Randall. <laughs> Seven years bad luck. He startled me. Did I? They searched the office this morning. I suppose you've come to ask me some more questions, Inspector. A man of your position, Randall, what would you expect him to have? Have? In the way of savings. Watch it, Jeff. Be careful. Savings? They're not my strong suit, Inspector. Out of character, perhaps. No desire to store away a few nuts. I suppose you tell me what we're really talking about. We're talking about 20,000 pounds under the floorboards of your office premises. My office? Your office. Oh, it's a plant. It's got to be. A plant? With 20,000 pounds? Even your best friend would find that hard to swallow. Right, 
What's happening? What's going on? So far, Randall, you've been here on a holding charge, whilst the evidence has been collected and examined. I see. From now on, you're offering different terms. Jeffrey Randall, I charge you that on the night of Tuesday, November the 23rd, you committed willful larceny of property belonging in the first instance to the Bank of England. I must also warn you that anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. Do you have anything to say? My client will make a formal reply to the charges in the form of statement at a later date. I think he meant that, Jeff. Twenty thousand pounds. The size of the sum makes it a very shrewd move on somebody's part. Well, whose? Of Alice? Why not? Yes, why not? Assuming your innocence, he's the best suspect to date. In fact, Jeff, the only one. You're not going? Yes, the Club 70. Perhaps I can persuade Mr. O'Malley to buy me a drink. If ever I need a lawyer. You might, sooner than you think. Anything wrong? Hmm. The uh, singer's a bit late for a number. Anne Marie. Yeah. Look, will you. Will you excuse me for a moment? I'll take a look upstairs. Upstairs? She has the apartment above the club. Did you know you're late for your number? Or did you just plan not to turn up? A holiday? Don't have to ask your permission, do I? No, but I find it very strange you didn't mention it. But I don't blame you for wanting to go. <laughs> I've been very dumb, haven't I, Annie? I don't know what you're talking about, Kevin. Oh, you don't, do you? I'm saying I've been a bit slow putting two and two together. Who else knew about the money? Who else knew that Jeff Randall was the man to frame me? What are you going to do? I'm going to take you down to the police station and swap you for Jeff Randall, OK? No, O'Malley. It's not at all OK. You? You mean together? You two together pulled off the job. Well, don't sound so astonished. You forget. We had an excellent plan of operation to work from. Yours. And uh, what would have happened if I decided to go ahead and do the job myself? Oh, we guessed that you wouldn't. We knew you'd chicken out at the last moment. <laughs> what an epitaph that'd make. He, uh, he chickened out at the last moment. Most times. Keep away. Keep away! Where are you going? Good evening, madam. You're right. Let's see what Mr. O'Malley's up to. decided to give up singing. She's just come into her legacy from the British Treasury.
I've got a car downstairs. Is it fast? Run for it. Yeah, but where to? I told you we could do it. Can they force us back? No. We'll be outside territorial waters before anybody knows where we're heading. Cooperation. What cooperation? I haven't got time to explain. Listen, I wanted to meet someone at an airport. Own up, Marty. The inspector's not going to do me any favors. I'm a prisoner charged with a serious offense. Well, you'll have to tempt him into concessions. Tell him you know where the rest of the money is. He'll listen. Oh, sure, he'll listen. What then? Leave the rest to me. I'm flying. Hey, where's this airfield? Oh, it's a private airport in Surrey. Do you remember when Jeannie and you and I went down for a picnic? Yeah. <laughs> Crossing the coast in ten minutes. Well, it'll be too dark to see the coastline. You worry too much. Navigating a journey like this is a simple matter of reading a compass. As I understand it, Randall, you want me to go herring off to some small private airfield in Surrey. That's right, Inspector. If you want to recover the rest of the money. Well, of course I do. And apprehend whoever's responsible. We believe we already have one of them, Randall. I take it this information is tantamount to a confession. On the contrary, Inspector. I hope you'll use it to establish my innocence. All right, Randall. I won't press you for detail. Ta. And if you are instrumental in recovering the stolen money, it'll stand you in good stead. You're too kind. <laughs> Move round. That's it. Come on. Can't understand it, Anne. We should be over the sea by now. I can still see lights below. Must be a strong crosswind. An amazingly strong crosswind. Now 
stay there. Fantastic. a light aircraft. And getting closer, too. Ah, if that's the same plane, there's nothing short of a miracle. Randall couldn't have known. Could he? Well, I don't see what else the police are doing here. all the excitement. Well, until they get the money and those two women, I'm going to go on missing it. Well, it won't be long now. The plane's just coming down. They think they're landing just inland of Cali. <laughs> they're in for a shot, then. Hey, Jeff. Huh? Do you mind if I get back there? I want to see the expression on the faces when they discover where they are. Sure. What's that? Coffee. Yeah. Cheers, Marty. Cheers! Navigation was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the maintenance staff. I must confess, I'm looking forward to hearing French spoken again. If you'll come this way, there's a few questions we'd like to ask you. Oh, yes. Very French. So that's it. I'll be freed as soon as my lawyer makes an application for the charges to be dropped. Yes, that's about the size of it. Good, sooner the better. Hey, Jeff, it might not be all that soon. What? Why not? Where's Elizabeth? Well, she's planned to let O'Malley drive her home. She's what? 